Our next candidate is a Republican candidate, John Katsitamides. So I'm, you're going to find me, even though this is an arts and culture uh, conversation, uh, talking a lot about uh, budgeting and funding because we can all say, yeah, we want arts in the schools and we want to play instruments. But it, it does come down to a question of, is there money to do this? Uh, should there be, first of all, if, if we're spending one and a half percent of you know, our entire DOE budget, our operating budget for the schools, on, on all forms of arts, music, everything, bands, uh, should that be more? Well, you know, I, I grew up at public schools. I went to PS 192 back in the 50s. I went to Brooklyn Tech High School in the 60s. I'm a product of public school education. Um, we grew up with music. We grew, grew up with some arts. I think we're uh, taking away from our students today, and uh, we should provide more. Uh, when you say the budget is very flexible, uh, you know, when you spend a couple hundred million dollars on uh, some of those bicycle lanes, when you spend a couple hundred million dollars on building hills on Governor's Island, there's plenty of money. It's allocation. Thank you. And you know what it comes down to? Whom do you trust to do the right thing for the kids? And I'm in it. Look, I'm a successful businessman. I made a ton of money. I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, no, I'm not ashamed of it. That's what America's all about. Only in America, land of opportunity. I grew up on 135th Street, just 15 blocks from here. And I did well. Uh, I'm in it. I don't need a job going in. I don't need a job going out. Nobody owns me. The only reason I'm doing this is I want to do the right thing for our city. I want to do the right thing for the students, and I want to do the right thing for our city. And, and what is the right thing? I mean, you're, as you say, you're a very successful businessman. You're, uh, as, in that role, you, you, you look at numbers, you read mm -hmm. metrics, you see how things are going. Uh, I, I want to well, I was in, I was in um, uh, an event in uh, Long Island City, and there was a professor there. He says, in 1951, our students were number two in the world as far as being students. Now, God knows, I think we're number 36. This That's is a Ameri American students. American students. That's a shame. And we have to take responsibility and we have to do something to fix it. Uh, I've been saying things widely in every event I went to that uh, our 35 to 40% dropout rate for high school students is wrong. Uh, somebody uh, made a decision in good conscience. They, they, they wanted to do the right thing 35 years ago that everybody should get an academic course. But that's not true. That's not right. Uh, I've been advocating uh, pushing trade courses. You know, when I went to Brooklyn Tech, we took foundry, we took machine shop, we took all kinds of courses. We could train as an alternative to dropping out and going to work for Burger King for $8 an hour. Let's give them an alternative. Let's teach them how to be a carpenter, electrician, a plumber. They can make $60,000, $70,000 a year and be able to live in a middle class family. Let's teach people how to be nurses. Let's teach people how to earn a living. Uh, and I think we should have alternative teaching for our students in lieu of the only decision they can make is just to drop out. And if, when you're given a number like the fact that 20% of New York City schools have no full-time arts teacher of any kind. It's wrong. So every school should have a full-time arts teacher. Uh, absolutely correct. I think uh, our, New York City is the greatest city in the world. And I believe we should have arts. We should have music. I, rem I remember the, my first music teacher. You know? And, and our kids are looking to us for a future and education. They're looking, you know what they're looking for? They're looking for hope. And that's one of the reasons I'm running. Look, I'm successful. I want to be able to go to these neighborhoods and say, look, I made it. You could make it too. And that's what I'm going to do. Because that's what I'm doing this for. And I think I can give hope to these kids. I've been with Mr. Morgenthau 
on the Police Athletic League for 28 years. I'm not a Johnny come lately. 28 years, we're going to those neighborhoods saving kids. The other problem in those neighborhoods, how, you know what percentage? 40 years ago, when Senator Moynihan, I was talking to him, 25% of, of those kids in those neighborhoods were single parent homes. You know what they are now? Closer to 70%. Shame. We have to, look. We, and how does, the mayor solve, how does the mayor of New York We're not going to solve, I'm not here to tell you we're going to solve the whole world's problems in one day. But it's the same thing with the Police Athletic League. Maybe we can save another 10%, another 20%. That's what I want to do. Save some of them. We'll teach them a trade, teach them how to make a living, teach them how to join the middle class. That's important. You need people that care, not care about where they're going to get their next $100,000 from to run for, for a city council or whatever. I mean, that's all they care about is raising money. And I'm here. I just want to do the job. You guys are doing a great job in our schools, and oh, I can't read that far. I mean, you know, I'm getting old. You know yeah, I, mean? I, I have to jump in now. Please. Um, you, um, you have a number of businesses in New York, uh, 2,000 employees here. Yes. You must be aware of how hard it is to keep any business flourishing when rents and property costs are constantly going Well, up. I've joked around. If I, if I didn't have Gristides, I'd be higher up on the Forbes list. <laughs> yes, well, that may be true, but still, um, it's true. You can imagine what it's like for arts organizations who uh, have to pay. Uh, if we've, had, we've lost a major dance company to Chicago years ago because they couldn't afford to stay in New York. And, you know, between my wife and myself, we try to support a lot of these groups. Well, I've looked at your phil philanthropical uh, adventures, and they all seem to be... I didn't see any arts and cultural institutions. Well, I saw you know, a lot of worthy causes. A Doc lot of Edie's, worthy causes. Uh, Alzheimer's, yeah. the uh, Police Athletic League, but... I'll give you one right now. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, for the last six months, I've been uh, uh, doing uh, uh, Tony LaBianco's play, May LaGuardia, because I really enjoy his work. Uh, and we are, the first two weeks of August, we're doing uh, probably about 10 more shows. You're producing it? Am um, I producing I'm the executive producer. You know what that means? Yes. I write the check. Mm. <laughs> do you, do, would you, as mayor, make a firm commitment to give more money to the arts than we're getting right now, which is one quarter of 1% of the city's total budget, considering the major role that the arts play in the city's economy. They draw tourists. 110%, because you know why? I really believe it. And I'm not a professional politician. As people around, when I make a commitment, I keep it. Just one other thing. You uh, once said, I'm a Manhattanite. I feel sorry for those people who aren't. Would arts organizations <laughs> in the, uh, the other four boroughs uh, be well, happy to hear that? Uh, well, you know, it, thank you for the audience to clarify that. Okay? That was Crane's Magazine, and they apologized the week after, but absolutely. They published one story in the front page, and they published everything else in page 47. Mm -hmm. I was talking about our supermarket business at that time. And, and nobody said anything about it, that we had like 57 stores in Manhattan, and we had like five stores in the outer boroughs. And that was the only thing I was talking about when I was talking the outer boroughs, because the Manhattan stores at that time were making money, the outer boroughs were not. Actually, I understand. I used to do advertising for Bohack, the late lamented Bohack chain. My condolences. Uh, <laughs> yes. Did well, you get to them, paid? Yeah, well, I worked for the ad agency. We got paid. But, um, and it was owned by uh, the same people who owned and Paramount. And Galfin Duvall. Yes. What, anyway. Was that the nickname, Galfin Duvall? <laughs> Galfin Weston. Yes, Galfin Weston. Mr. Kosmatidis, yes. thank you so much. I enjoyed this. Thank you very much.